morning, church. I'm very thankful and glad I'm back to pulpit again to worship you again. Um, and Kim and I want to express our hearty thanks to you all for your concerns and prayers and your cards and your calling, your gifts. And, and during my illness, and, and I'm getting better. I'm um, way to go, but I'm better now, enough to stand before you to worship with you. And I really thank you for your love. And Kim and I really felt your love during my illness time. And I'm thankful to God for all the thanks. I, how are you doing? We're all happy you're back too. Oh, thank you. I'm happy too. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll join you next week, choirs. All right. Welcome. Welcome to this place of worship as we worship God and spirit and the truth. And we welcome um, our um, online worship with us later on. And then Jeremy continue to work for our going back to our live streaming system again. It will come soon. How long will it take, Jeremy, before we go back to live streaming again? Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. So then also, all those um, who are joining the worship, uh, YouTube, later after this service will join. Welcome all. all that. So um, can we turn again uh, each other and then shall we uh, welcome each other? Call each other's name and saying welcome. We love you. And then God loves you too. Welcome all. Welcome. Thank you again. So um, February, we have um, many new um, programs of the church, a new season. So would you please um, read the announcements in the worship bulletin? And mark your calendar. On February 23rd, we will begin the our new prayer ministry, um, as we are seeing the general conference will be held next year, April 2024, to discuss about the future of our United Methodist Church. So we want to begin in our prayer in the local church. So we opened our sanctuary each week, every Thursday, 6.30 p.m., for everybody, anybody to come to church. First, pray for God's will be done. And pray for the United Methodist, for the future of our denomination. And pray for the Bethany Church. And then pray for your own personal prayer. Prayer, uh, pray for your intercessory prayer. So, um, um, free to come and free to go. It depends I mean, uh, how long you stay, according to your own um, decision. But sanctuary will be open 6.30 p.m. every Thursday afternoon. And also, we will begin Bethany Bible Study, BBS, uh, February 23rd, 7 p.m. We'll begin the studying Book of Romans, and then you select the Book of Romans the most. So we'll begin the um, Bible study Romans. We're meeting at uh, Res, uh, Lacey Martin uh, classroom, and then also we'll provide the uh, hybrid way in person. At the, also, we'll try to offer uh, the uh, Zoom for uh, our online uh, folks too. So mark your calendar, and also mark your calendar February 19th, Sunday, as Bethany Mission Day, as we will celebrate um, the celebration of giving, as the after bazaar ministry last December last year, we got the, um, the profits from it. We want to give it away for our local agencies. And we invite each local agencies um, 
to listen what they do for our community. So it will be a good. Uh, it will be a one service on that day. Uh, no early service, 8.30. But we'll meet one service, 11 o'clock. We invite them all to join our celebration of our mission and ministry of the local church, Bethany. And also, Lent begin new season after Epiphany. Begin uh, Ash Wednesday, February 23rd, uh, thir- uh, 22nd. We offer the Ash Wednesday service, evening service, p.m. Wednesday. Before that, on Tuesday, we will offer the fellowship, Shrope Tuesday dinner, February 21st uh, at 6 o'clock. So invite them all to have our fellowship together. All right. So other announcements is printed in the worship bulletin and read it and see how God will invite you to join to be a part of our church together. Welcome all. Let us worship God in spirit and the truth. Can't see. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back, Pastor Paul. Uh, Please stand for the call to worship. We are called to bring a new understanding of God, that God so loves the world. We are called to bring a new hope in God, that God gives us new life. We are called to follow the commandments and the law. Come, let us be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. Let us join together in our love of God to worship and follow Jesus. Please remain standing for our opening hymn, number 428, for the healing of the nations.
Please join me in the affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed, number 881. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Please join me in the opening prayer. God of mystery and of judgment, who has made us to be salt and light in a tasteless, shadowed world, guide us in this time of worship. Grant us understanding and spiritual discernment so that others may see your good works through us. Give you the glory and be moved to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of the Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Uh, the Old Testament reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 1 through 9a. Cry aloud, spare not, 
Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their transgression, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why have we fasted, and thou seest it not? Why have we humbled ourselves, and thou takest no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast you seek your own pleasure, and oppress all your workers. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight, and to hit with wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice to be heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day for a man to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a rush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast and a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. The gospel, please stand for the gospel reading, which is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trodden underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Nor do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Think not that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Whoever then relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But he who does them and teaches them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Let us pray, Lord, that we come before your word. Thank you, Lord. Speak to us. Let Let your word live alive in us. Lord, Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church, again. We are glad we are receiving the word of God this morning. During the um, Epiphany season of Epiphany, we continue to read the Old Testament book of Isaiah and also New Testament gospel of Matthew. As you remember, reading the Beatitude last Sunday, that we continue to read the Jesus Sermon on the Mount, the Matthew chapter 5. Today's reading is about Jesus' teaching. Teaching on salt and lamp. It's an analogy of how Jesus' followers Christians and then churches are called to be salt to the world, light to the world. Now, let us think about it. What these two have in common? Salt and the lamp. Salt has flavor. Yeah, it's this. They do exist for the sake of others rather than their own sake. In fact, human life cannot exist without them. Salt 
is to preserve food as you know it every day from decay. The lamp is to shine to keep people from falling. The light is there to help folks find their way. It is about shining on the path. The salt serves as an enhancer, magnifying taste, and the healing agent. It is invaluable, invaluable. When Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world. He calls his followers and Christians and churches to live for the sake of others. For the glory of God, for the kingdom of God as healing agent of God in the world. I like your answer, Dave. Salt, right? Salt in the lamp analogy, secondly, represents the life-illumining power of God, the grace of God, given to us. Salt at Jesus' time was mostly rock salt. It was formed in a thick underground layers for a long time, and people dig it out. So it can remain salty or it can lose its saltiness while their forms are still there, losing saltiness in it. That's what Jesus said. The lamp shines its light only by burning the oil. Jesus' time, it was olive oil to make a lamp and wicks and burned in the light. The teaching of Jesus in the, this analogy is the grace of God who empowers us, the follower of Jesus Christ, the church, to be salty and shiny, to act as salt and lamp in the world as reflectors, to shine the light of Jesus to the world, that, so that others may know God through us, reflectors. Jesus said, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds. Glorify your heavenly Father. Two things. Now, as we continue to meditate on this passage, we may ask this question, and then, what the salt of the earth means? How can we be salt? How can we live it out in the world? Remember, of all the, the teachings in the Bible, Jesus pointed out the greatest commandment of all, or the law, the prophets. Jesus said, it is love. Love the Lord your God with all your hearts and with all your soul and with all your mind and love your neighbor, neighbors as yourself. Love. It's the salt. Love is the foremost sign of saltiness in the world. As you read the prophet Isaiah passage, it's the love with justice, love with mercy, love with compassion, love with God's righteousness. Sorty of love. And Jesus said, the same book, John 13, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. 
This love comes from God through Jesus Christ, who loved us first, as he said, first to John. While we were yet sinners, God in Jesus Christ died for us. And he was raised for us. Resurrection. There's a very interesting uh, book written by once Christians but left the church. Her name is author Anne Rice. She was an atheist. She became famous as an, uh, the author of a number of novels about uh, vampires and stories about witches and, and all. She lived as an atheist for a long time before 1998, after nearly 40 years of denying God. And Rice returned to her church of her youth. And then she produced the two novels about Jesus and wrote an autobiography that describes her journey back to Christian faith, back to Christ, along with her decision to become a Christian, back to church. But then, 12 years later, Anne Rice announced that I quit being a Christian. I am done with the church. She said that she wasn't leaving Christ, still having a faith in Christ. And her faith in him remained central to her life. What she was abandoning was her church, which she had come to see as a quarrelsome, hostile, disputatious, uh, and deservedly infamous group she ever had find. So she gave up her church while she remained have Jesus Christ and faith in him. Three words. Quarrelsome, hostile, Disputatious. Well, we may think, well, it is her own personal experience. It's not all the churches are not like that church. Of course, it's a one of the one church among many churches she experienced from. But these three words, quarrelsome, hostile, Disputatious. These words don't convey love. Love. Jesus calls us Christians in the churches to focus on being the salt of the earth, salt of the earth, and in which is love. And love, this love always draw the people to God, to God, and draw to each other. And Jesus said, you are the light of the world. It means that we are people who bear the light of Jesus Christ in us and bring it out to the world. A light that shines with humility, gentleness, patience, unity, and peace, as you remember reading the Beatitude last week, which give us a new perspective, new value of life, 
wearing the value of the kingdom of God, perspective of the kingdom of God, and an attitude living in the kingdom of God. Jesus said, let your light shine before others. That is the command of Jesus Christ to all of us who are following him. As he looked around, as he looked around, looked around the world, we have seen the darkness in the world. Darkness, power of darknesses. Jesus, however, never says that our job, our job is to curse the darkness. Our job is not to curse the world. Our job is not to curse the darkness. Instead, our calling, our calling is to let the light of Jesus Christ bearing in us shine toward the world, shine toward the darkness. And then God will take care of the rest. The story of a famous missionary named O. Stanley Jones' story. One day, Mr. Jones met Mahatma Gandhi, the Indian nonviolence pacifist, the leader of the Indian. One day, Mr. Jones asked Gandhi, Mr. Gandhi, though you quote the words of Christ, words of Christ quite often, why is that? you appear to so adamantly reject becoming his followers, Christians, not joining the church. Mr. Gandhi answered him, Mr. Jones, I don't reject your Christ. I love your Christ. It's just that so many of your Christians are, are so unlike your Christ in your living. That's what Mr. Gandhi remained as non-church goer while he learned a lot about Christ. Why did Gandhi feel that this way? It is nothing to do with our theology, nothing to do with our doctrine, and everything to do with our lifestyle, experiences, the way how we say it, the way how we behave each other. Contrast to what Christ teaches us to do as a Christian, as a church as well, Mr. Gandhi's experience came from his own personal experiences when he was very young as a lawyer. You know, Gandhi studied law at Oxford in England, got a lawyer license, and then he lived in South Africa practicing the law. One day, he was... Uh, very attracted by the Christian faith, and he read a Bible. And he, st he studied the Bible and the teaching of Jesus very interestingly, deeply, and decided to follow him. And then he began to explore becoming a Christian. One day, he decided to attend a church worship service. As he came up the steps of the church, a white South African church elder barred his way, saying, 
Where do you think you are coming? The man asked. And Gandhi replied, Oh, I'd like to attend the worship here. The church elder snarled at him, saying, There is no room for you. There is no room for blacks in this church. Get out of here. Or, I'll have my assistant throw you down the steps. Since that time on, Mr. Gandhi stopped coming to worship at the church. He resolved to adopt what was good in Christianity, but never to become a Christian. If it meant being part of the church like that he experienced. As Christians, as a church. Our mission is to be like Christ, to bring light into darkness. There are so many people who are attracted to the light of Christ in our days in the world who need his illumination if they are going to avoid get lost, hurting other people, damaging themselves, their own lives, knocking things over or living in hopelessness and fear, anxiety, on and on and on, you name them. They're out there people who need the light of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. We can help to guide them to the light of Christ, but first, first, Churches, Christians have to be first, the loving people first. Church, churches have to be places of welcome instead of rejection, love instead of hatred, grace instead of judgmental attitude. Humility instead of arrogance. Gentleness instead of violence. Unity instead of disintegration. And the light instead of darkness. A church that shines the light of Christ knows the truth of what was said by the Reverend Dr. King Jr. Who said this? Quote, Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do it. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love, love can do it. When we are salt in the light, people around us will see our good deeds and good works, words, and then give glory to God. They may find God through us. That's what Jesus point. They will observe that we are acting in ways that are gentle and loving rather than quarrelsome, hostile, hatredness. And they may even see the powerful brightness of the light of Christ reflected in what we say and what we do as a Christian, as a church as well. 
Jesus always promised his presence. Remember it. Where? Two or three gathered in my name. There am I with them. We loved reading it, right? Oh, Jesus Christ is always with us. Jesus promised to be present himself when we gathered in the church. Let us think about it. When we gather together, three or two or three or more people, we find there is differences, different opinions. We agree or disagree. We debate, discuss, discussion among people in the church. Always. We always saying right theology, sound doctrine, scripture passages, and convictions what we believe. Let us remember always, out of all this, remember what Jesus said. Love. Love. Jesus is watching over us. What we say, how we say, how we behave in the church. Because he said, I'll be there with you when you two or three or more gather together. Jesus Christ is watching over us. Speak to us. Love the greatest, many others. Remember, Jesus said, let your light shine before others. Be as salt in love and shining in the darkness. That is our mission as a church for the world. Apostle Paul put it this way. He says to the letter to the Corinthian church, there should be three, three, there should three always remain. Faith, hope, and love. Three. That is three elements that the Christian church always by the by. Faith, hope, and love. Apostle Paul says, the greatest of all for this is what? Love. It's a love. Remain forever. Love. And then he continued to say about what is the love, how to practice love in the 13th chapter of First Corinthians, beginning with love is patient and on and on and on. The way how we practice it. We are the manifestation of Christ in the world today. Noisy world, a dark world, your name is scary. Glorious world. Jesus says, let your light shine. Let your light shine. Be salt in the light in the world. The rest of it, God will take care of it. Especially as a United Methodist. As you're looking forward to what would happen in the future of the denomination, we want to begin our prayer to see where God is leading through all these chaoses, conflicts, and differences while we are united in love. Let us pray. Lord, love as you called us to put into practice in diverse opinions and discussions, even in the darkness of the world. Enable us, empower us, O oh Lord, to bring and bearing your light 
to the world. And now we pray, O oh Lord, as we lift up our hearts and mind. Lord, in your love, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all the Christians in the churches around. All the clergy and the ladies, men and women, for all who dwell in the entire world. Lord, let your will be done on earth. We pray for all people in their daily lives and work, for families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone in the loneliness. We pray for our community, our nation. Pray for the world. We pray for all who work for justice, freedom, peace. We pray for our stewardship. For the just and the proper use of your creation, O oh Lord. And we pray for the victims of natural disaster, victims of hunger, victims of fear, victims of injustice, victims of oppressive environment, victims of war. And we pray for all who are in danger, sorrow any kind of trouble. We pray for all who minister to the sick, to the friendless, to the needy. And we pray for the peace, your peace on earth, O oh Lord, especially peace in Ukraine. Pray for the unity of the Church of God. Pray for the United Methodist Church. We pray for all who proclaim the gospel, for all who seek the truth. We pray for your mercy, mercy on us. Now we pray for all those who are in sicknesses, illnesses, especially we lift up their names to your Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. 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 Lord, now we pray for ourselves. In your love, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Thank you, Lord. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as we continue to worship God, uh, let us offer ourselves to God as a living sacrifices.
We'll do it later. <laughs> Two weeks break, I confused the worship order. <laughs> Let us continue the worship. Jesus Christ invites to all. To his table, who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another as we joined the prayer of confession and the pardon. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved with our heart. We have failed to be an obeyed in the church. We have not done your will. We have not broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As reconciled and forgiven people, let us offer ourselves to God as a living sacrifices. And let us offer God's tithe offerings for the mission and ministry of the church for the glory of God together. And now we invite ushers to come forward. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we are thankful and grateful for this opportunity we're offering ourselves to you as a living sacrifices, offering the visible sign of our thanksgiving for your kingdom, for the mission and ministry of the church. Lord, receive us and receive them. Bless us and bless them. Use us and use them. For your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus' name. We prayed. Amen.
Let us be seated. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. And a good and joyful thing always, everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made a covenant to be our sovereign God, spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended it, he promised to be with us always in the power of the, your word and the Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, and broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of this, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving 
as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on these gifts, bread and wine, make them before us, the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Church in your Holy Holy Spirit in your Holy Church all honor and glory is yours almighty Father now and forever Amen and now with the confidence of children of God let us pray our Father who art in heaven Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. That lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus Christ invites you all to come to his table. Now we serve with the uh, pre-sealed, pre-packed um, cup, bread and juice for you, or the wine for you. As you come through the aisle, as they are led by the, our ushers, come and receive the cup. And then as you go around the communion rail for your personal prayer, or the first pew, in the uh, sanctuary for your personal prayer before you go back to your place. So ushers, will you please? And then also our choir will serve the first.
let us join together the prayer of thanksgiving after communion. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves, fathers, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Shall we stand as we are able? Join the closing hymn. Now is the time for us to, for you to bring the light of Jesus Christ to the world. Isn't it the time? Yes, it is. Let's go into the world to be the light of the world of Christ as we go. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever and evermore. Go now in peace and love and joy to serve the Lord, to serve each other, to love God and to love each other. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.